All right, in this one we're going to talk about ray tracing. Uh, we're going to talk about the basic setup involving the camera, using the camera and figuring out how to send a ray from the camera through the screen out into the world. So our camera is specified just like it was before. We have an eye position, which is the look from position, and then we'll have a gaze vector which is the direction that the camera is looking. And then we'll construct a coordinate system just like before, a UVW coordinate system, which is the camera coordinate system. And somewhere out there we'll have a screen, which is where we are actually looking. This is the exact same setup we had in project number one. So it should look familiar. We're just playing around with it a little bit differently. So typically you'd be given the camera and nx and ny, which is the number of pixels in the x and the number of pixels in y on the screen. So that's the number of pixels on the screen. And what we're going to do is write a pair of for loops for i equals 1 to nx and for j equals 1 to ny. And then inside that for loop, what we're going to do is we're going to cast a ray into the world and see what it hits. Once we know what that ray hits, we can figure out what color to make that pixel. So at this point, we know I and J, and we want the ray origin and the ray direction. Well, the ray origin is easy. The ray origin is just defined. To get the ray direction, what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to find out where IJ is in screen space, I'm sorry, in camera space. And then we're going to send that to world space. So to find out where IJ is in the camera space, we're going to pretend that we have a screen centered about the origin, which is a pretty good assumption because that's how we designed camera space. We have 0 to NX pixels in the horizontal direction and 0 to NY pixels in the vertical direction. And we know IJ, which is which pixel we want to send a ray through. So what we need to do is figure out where IJ is in screen space. So, I'm sorry, in camera space. So this is the left edge of the screen and this is the right edge of the screen. So to get the left edge of the screen we're going to use some trigonometry with the camera viewing angle and this is just like in project one so you can go review that. But we'll assume we found the left, the right, the top, and the bottom edges, edges of the screen. So looking just at the horizontal direction what we're doing is we're saying the screen space goes from 0 to the number of pixels. The camera space goes from left to right along the U axis in camera space. That's the V axis in camera space. So I just want to linearly interpolate the value of I that I have as it goes from 0 to NX across the value from L to right on the Y axis. I'm sorry, on the U axis. So that's just going to be the left edge plus the right edge minus the left edge times i plus one half divided by the number of pixels in the screen. The reason we divide by one half right here is we want to go through the center of the pixel. If you want to jitter your ray a little bit and go through something that's not the center of the pixel, then you would just change that one half to be something else. So now I know the ray direction in camera space. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I don't know the ray direction in camera space. What I do know is I know where the ray strikes the screen. And so the ray direction is just the location of where the ray strikes the screen, which we'll call S minus the eye position, which in turns out is zero because we assumed that the eye was at the origin. So that actually is the ray direction. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to send that to world space 
So this is the ray direction in camera space. And now we're going to get the ray direction in world space. So the ray direction in world space is equal to negative d times w, which is a vector, 